Real Animals Fishing Show is presented by Yellowfin Yachts. Hey guys, today Billy and I are fishing out of O'Neill's Marina. We've got two weeks left for grouper season on the west coast of Florida. Captain Billy is going to help us fill the box. Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. It's going to be off the hook. We left the dock this morning, we had very little wind at all and in, a, in about a 20 mile run offshore. The winds have picked up just a little bit. Again, pretty nice out really for October, central, west central Florida. We're gonna do a little grouper digging. We got some big fish showed up on the machine. Gonna kinda go to battle with some pretty heavy tackle here and see if we can get a couple in the boat. These pieces have been loaded up with gag grouper and scamp and mangrove snapper, all kinds of cool stuff. Might even run into a kingfish today, so we're looking forward to it. Wind's supposed to drop as the day goes on, so it should be just a perfect, perfect day to be offshore. Out here, you know, a lot of times heading to a spot, you know, look at your machine because you'll see something that looks really cool that you want to check out before you get to it. Right. And nine out of ten times, you won't ever make it to your, to your spot. Well, there's so much great structure here. Ma'am, is your bait flipping out? No, nah, you know, I've had a couple little, sound like they felt like they nosed into it a little bit, but nothing to yeah, really get haven't really hammered it, but man, my bait is freaking. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. Get him, Michael. Something screwed up. Think you got a scamp there, buddy? No, bud. Now, scamp got to be 15 inches. It's not very big, but he uh, he whacked it. There's been some- Little grouper. Circle what, hook what, right in the corner of the What flavor yeah. grouper we got there? Is that a little guy? Little gag, yeah, buddy. What do you know? You see that circle hook work just like it was supposed to, too. Put him right in the corner of the yak. A little guy. Does he? Is his belly sticking out or? No, no, he's good. All right, cool. Yeah, he doesn't need to be vented. All right, he's good. He's good. Whew! Lots of energy Give right me a there, bit, buddy. Hey, there's fish one. We got the we got a little fish slime on our hands. Right, and I got us a flat line out too, just in case old kingfish comes by. Always a good plan. Yeah, that wind, if you notice the way that we're laying, Mike, <laughs> the wind is switched on us, so we're not really right on our stuff. May need to re-anchor here in just a second. <laughs> he roasted. <laughs> roasted. So what do we got here? Might be a little mackerel. Is it a little spanny mac? Maybe, he's not really. Or maybe a grouper came up and wiped it. Who knows, he's, he's staying down, whatever. Getting a little bigger, huh? Yeah, he get, well. Def, Could be a king dog? Def, might be, definitely getting a little grumpier. Tell you what, I've got my line down Me over too. there. Here. Yeah, I'm worried about him getting into that one behind okay. me. Well, this one ain't coming up right now. All right. <laughs> you got to fight him over there, don't you? All right, we'll, we'll just fight him. We'll over just, the top. We'll just work around. Oh, yeah, a little, a little kingfish. See if I can get a tail swing. All right, I'm going to try and bring him by you, buddy. That's fine. Just keep him out of that line if you can. I'm trying. See, that's how that one's all rocked up. He's just finding out what's going on, you know? Yeah. You know, that's the nice part about kingfish. It doesn't take a real big one. To do that. For the party to get started, yeah. I tell you, you know, you're sitting out here doing this and you're catching these and all of a sudden that 40, 50 pounder rolls by. Yeah, the nice thing about this fish is. Buddy, he is not happy. He's probably not alone. Oh, no, he's not alone. He's not alone. So oh, right. whoa. Cuda. Cuda, cuda, cuda. Yeah, it's cuda. Get out Yeah, don't be careful, mate. You don't want to. No. Oh, he's already got him. He already get out got of it. There. He already got it. Yeah. Oh, well. Let's see if we can catch the cuda. <laughs> see if we can upgrade. Uh. Trying to see if I can get this barracuda hooked up, but he's a little smarter than we are. He, we had a kingfish on. Come on now, Billy. He's smarter than you are. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> but he, uh, oh, that's too bad. He kind of took the propeller off of our fish. That's too bad. Yeah, it happens. It happens. It happens. That's part of the cycle of life out here.
we're not exactly sitting on the piece. The wind kind of blew us around a little bit. So we're gonna sit here for a minute and see Mikey's fish went in the rocks. So we're gonna see if we can get him loose and uh, sit here another minute, let him fire down, see if he can catch us a little scamp here for the, for the supper table. And then we're probably gonna re-anchor to try and position on our piece a little better, because that is key. Mikey bait feels like it got a little bigger. Up, uh, that's why as you can tell, we're not right on the piece, because we're catching these little fish, these little red group of the little guy. So we're gonna let this guy go. You got one, Mike? Yeah, little guy. We're on the little fish bite. This is my frustration to all the claims that there are no grouper in the Gulf of Mexico, or there isn't enough breeders in the Gulf of Mexico. Because on a lot of trips, you come out here and catch a lot of little fish. That little guy is coming from somewhere. Fun to catch, fun to catch. Oh, another little red. Another little red right in the corner of the mouth. Right in the yap trap. Right in the yap trap. Yep. Again, we got no uh, air bladder coming up, so we don't need to vent them. You always want to remember out here, fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, you're reef fishing for reef species, you got to use a circle hook. You got to have a D hooker. I'm sorry. You got to have a D hooker. Got to have a D hooker and a venting tool on the boat. In case you get that big air bladder come up, you need to come in from the side and vent them. Make sure they're able to go back to the bottom and come back and see us again when they get a little bigger. I finally got one, Mike. Oh boy. I figured you'd get hot. No, nah, he's little, but I tell you what, you know, it's fun. We've been getting, like I say, we've been getting some nice scamp. There's one right there, speak of the devil. Here's how you can tell a scamp from a gag. If you look at his eyes, his eyes are green, he's got those green eyes going. And then look at his tail. See how that tail is concave right there, how it's like a broom? And that's how you can tell a scamp. They've gotta be 15 inches. That guy's about 14 and a half. So we're gonna let him go, give him the benefit of the doubt. But absolutely delicious table fare. But that's how you tell him. There you go, buddy. Go on back and tell everybody we're coming. Well, the wind picked up a little bit here kind of changed us, pushed us off our piece. We re-anchored. I think anchoring is one of the most important things offshore. To really be good, you gotta be able to anchor and get on that spot. Machine looks a lot better now. We got a lot of fish down there. We're kind of picking at some little fish, uh, hoping to get another kingfish, hoping to get some big grouper. We'll just see what happens. It's a day of fishing. We're pre-front here. We've got a front headed our way. So we're hoping that that triggers the bite. A lot of times a pre-front You'll, you'll get a big push, a big fish that want to chew and eat before the storm gets here. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Good, yeah, Billy, that looks like a better fish, no? Yeah, well, on these little white rods, bro. Doesn't take much. Even a small fish looks awesome, you know? What do we got here? Another scamp. Is it? Yep. Oh, boy. A little scamp -a rooney You are a scamp master. I'm a scamp. Pretty fish. Nice, nice, pretty little fish. His belly's just tight as a tick, too, bro. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, he just puked up all kinds of glass minnows. Ah. I mean, all kinds of little fry bait, bro. He just... There's what's wrong with our bite. He's full. What you got, Mike? I don't know, buddy. Has he got a little attitude for a you? A little bit. Did that remora chase you down? It's my scamp. A scamp. Hey, dude, that's a nice scamp. That one might be... Might... Yeah, he's keeper. It's a scamp. That one's about 16, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't know. He's close. A scamp! Nice! Look how pretty the pattern is. Cool fish. Pretty eyes on them, man. And I didn't know that was kind of the, the big difference there, looking at their eyes and that, that pattern on them and the difference in the tail. That's pretty interesting. Come on, dog. No, he ain't happy. He is not happy. Oh, you get roasted, Mike? This one feels a little better. There we go. Another scamp. What you got, Mick? Oh, I don't know, buddy. It's not beating up my light rod too bad. Maybe another scamp. It is another scamp. I'm on fire. 
You're the Scamper Rooney! Captain Scamp today. Big Snook Billy. Got him! Come on, big man. Oh! Oh! So close. Ah, sea biscuits. That looks very similar to Homer Simpson fishing. Oh. Closed captioning brought to you by Gator Ford. Well, we just keep kind of moving here. This wind is changing really kind of breezy out. You know, it was a beautiful morning this morning when we took off. They were calling for 10 to 15. You know, sometimes it, they're wrong and you're happy because we showed up and it looked like it was going to be really calm. It was pretty calm all the way out here. And then we got out here, got anchored up. The wind started blowing a little bit. Definitely 10 to 15 now. Uh, kind of pushing us around this piece, but a lot of live bottom. I think there's a lot of big fish down here. We just kind of keep picking at the smaller guys. We've caught quite a few nice scamp. We've had a kingfish, so, you know, a lot of action. It's one of them days we're just gonna have to pick and poke and hopefully we get the big fish to show up. Man, I don't know what happened to this nice calm weather we're supposed to be having. It, it seems like if it gets really nasty weather to where it blows, all these fish really orient to the structures and they, jack, they really pile up. Come on, come on. I can feel him down there just doing that to it, but he's not really wanting to, really not wanting to commit. <laughs> We're on a roll, baby. I just got hit again. I went to uh, get a taste of my drink. I think they got a spotter down there, and he just absolutely almost took this rod out of my hand. Almost took the rod out. Michael, I'm getting roasted, pal. What's that? Okay. He said, send me down, I'm gonna poke him right in the eyeball. I don't know if they hit these, eat these guys because they taste good or because they get down there and they're like, would you just shut up? Kind of like you with me, would you just shut up? Yeah, I dang a lot I can do. He roasted me, got me into stuff. Let's see if we can talk him into coming out. I felt him take the bait. What they'll do a lot of times is they'll run in the hole. He'll flare his gear, gills out and he'll lock inside. And he can't get them out. He'll lock in there. I'm just gonna sit here and see if I get that weight. You see the rod tip bouncing. That's that weight sliding up the line. And Mike's got a fish on while I'm all goofed up here. Dude, I'm scamping it. You got no scamp, buddy? Got him scamp. We're inshore and it's KVD. We're offshore and it's scamp. <laughs> That's it. They're eating good. You can tell their bellies are really full. They're eating really good down there. That's really good. Pretty fish. On light tackle, super fun to catch, too. What you got there, buddy? I don't know, but he hit it on the move. Sweet. You gotta love that. Oh, stay with me, girl. Could it be another holy mackerel? I think so. Ain't very big, but it's coming this way, a little mac. Oh, you went all yoda on him, I bro. did, too. A little Spanish mackerel. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna use the D hooker on him because they got some toothpaces and um, they've got a bacteria in their mouth that keeps the blood from clotting up and coagulating, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you don't want to get bit by one out here, so there we go. Nice. Nice, good job, buddy. Hey, another fish. When you put your rods up, we got this long leader, you know, a lot of guys are just hook it and eye, but what I have this weight will bang into that. Just give yourself some slack. Let that go down, come back around the reel, hook it one of these eyes farther on up here. You don't want to hook it in an eye, you want to hook it behind the eye and then just tighten it up. And then that, when you're running and it's a little bumpy, that weight can slap that foam handle and it won't mess your uh, nice rod up. Well, this one's fighting a little different. Wow. I don't know what this is. <laughs> is he upset? He's not happy at all, bro. <laughs> Get him, big guy. Get that. 
<laughs> I know it's light tackle. This is a different fish, dude. It's, what you got? I don't know. It's silver. It's different. It's uh, that's oh, a blue runner. No, I don't know what that. What Let is me that, see. Billy? Rainbow runner. Is what it? Is that? That's a big blue. No, it's a lesser AJ, bro. That's what it is. It's a lesser amberjack. It's got AJ look to it, but he ain't. Wow. And I tell you, that fish is really underrated. That as is far as what? As far as table fare. Really? The lesser amberjack. It's a very white. I don't white, care for regular. Amberjack. No, it's a very white meat. Very white. Really? What's the size of them, do you know? Oh, gosh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Trick question. Trick question. I've never caught one of them out here. It's just small. Well, <laughs> How about that? He's not big enough. Something that's real crucial about being out offshore, I'm having a hard time doing it today. We've got a wind that's coming out of the east, northeast, our tides rolling in. So it's got the winds wanting to push the boat this way, tides wanting to drag it that way, and I'm having a hard time holding this right on our piece. And that is absolutely key, is to be on top of your structure. The way you can do it is once you drop the anchor, like right now we've got about a 25 degree anchor heading. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is drive over your piece at a 25 degree heading, go up, drop the anchor, and it should drop you back on it. Another way to do it is once you get your anchor in the water, you can drive ahead of your anchor, cleat it off on the back, drive over your piece at that heading, turn around and come right back down your track. When you get over it, hit reverse, drop your anchor right there, and boom, it'll spin you right around on it. And that is your tip of the week. Here, fishy, fishy. That's your line, isn't it? In this hundred yard square that we've anchored up several times on, the machine is showing fish everywhere. Oh, I mean, dude, we've got there. a good show all over this piece. They are there, brother. Yeah, there we go. Uh-oh. Could be a better fish, huh? Feels like a little better fish. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, he's a little better fish. A little better fish, a little better, a little better. Oh, there you go. A little yeah, better. Little red group out. Boy, Billy boy. Thank you. They're getting, they're getting a little bigger. A little bigger. We just need that big guy to eat. Another red. A little bigger though. Captain Billy's on a roll. Big snook Billy working on big grouper. <laughs> yeah, right, whatever, pal. You're embarrassing me, Mike. <laughs> oh, he's close. Yeah, he's gotta be, the red's got to be 20 inches. He looks like he's about 17, 18, maybe. Yeah, he's getting there. Again, we're in that 40 foot of water now. We come in a little further, no issues with venting. Circle hook's getting it done right in the corner of the mouth. Whoop. All you got to do is put them back, rebate, catch another fish. But it never ceases to amaze me the amount of diversity out here. It's always, it's always a new species, always some new fish to catch, like the scamp, although they weren't very big. No. You know, we caught quite a few of them, and it's the most I've ever caught, for sure. He lumped it, let it go. I put it right back down to him, and he ate it. A little better fish, Mike? A little better. A lot of reds here. A lot of reds. It's okay, bending the rod, getting the workout in. It's all good. What you got, Mike? Another fish. Another fish. Sweet. Yeah, there's no shortage of grouper in there. That's a little gag here. Little guy? Yeah. We we'll gotta get his mama to eat. Getting bigger. We'll get him, we'll get him. Getting bigger. We're drifting back to the rock pile. We'll start here, we'll just keep easing our way back. I really like it on light tackle, makes it so much fun. You risk losing a big one sometimes if you go light, but then if you do catch some shorts, you're still getting quite a fight out of them. But if you land a big fish on that, you've done something. Yeah, you feel good about yourself, absolutely. Guys, hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. I tell you, man, there's nothing worse than bringing your buddy out and wanting to put you on the meat. 
Hey, and, we were on the meat. We were on the meat. They were all over they the just, screens. Dude, I'm, lo- I'm looking at them right now. I'm getting ready to take the fillet knife, put it in my teeth, and go native. <laughs> Don't you worry about it one bit. Gosh, right? I know I'll be Absol- hearing this later. Absolutely, just it was it was a, it was a tough day, but we caught a lot of fish. Wind picked up on us. A lot of different things happened. It's just the way it goes. I promise you, this guy catches big fish out here all the time. If you want to book a trip and come do it, I highly recommend that you do. 1-866-GAMEFISH is the number you need to know. For more great fishing info, you can log on to the website, realanimalsfishingteam.com. Remember, you can follow Billy and I on Facebook, and until next week. Do yourself a favor and take a kid fishing. Moths and flies, and how many miles offshore are we? 20. How do they get out here? They fly. Well, well, I figured that much, but for a little bug like that to fly 20 miles, that's a <laughs> heck of a lot of flying. <laughs> Steve, Steve, you'll get used to it. They follow Billy wherever he goes. <laughs>